Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solutions series and I've brought forward a topic that's not just important for JE advanced uh, situations but also for the upcoming IOQ that is the Indian Olympiad qualifiers. Uh, the topic name as you could see on the thumbnail is the catenary but actually we are going to solve the problems without knowing the uh, shape or the equation of this curve, which is what is expected of physics students that they need not know the mathematical equation for this curve, right? So during this tutorial, we'll try to see from the basics, how are we supposed to approach the problem whenever a heavy rope hangs under its own weight with some constraints, okay? So we'll sequentially go through different problems as you could see. I, uh, we are going to solve uh, somewhere around four to five problems and please do wait till the end of the video. I'm going to give you three more practice problems that are very essential for your understanding of this topic. Okay, so let's move ahead. So this is the first question we are going to, we'll start off with a basic one. Some of you might have actually done this question, but I would urge you that uh, description of the solution would involve uh, some small nuggets, which I will take it in the future question. So the uh, problem to problem will carry on the information to the next one so that uh, the understanding becomes better and better. So even if you have done this question before, uh, please do watch the solution before you move on to the next one. Okay. So in case you want to have a fair try, pause the video here, have a try and then only move forward. Okay. So let's move ahead. A uniform rope is tied between a nail A on the wall and a nail B on the ground. The rope without touching the ground anywhere assumes a curved shape known as catenary. Tangents at the ends A and B of this catenary make angles alpha and beta with the vertical respectively. Which of the following conclusions can you make? Okay, one or more than one answer may be right. So he's talking about horizontal component in option A, then vertical component, then description about this angles alpha and beta. Okay, so once the fair try is done, so let's move ahead with the solution. So a lot of things on the screen, just follow my lead as I always keep telling you, don't look through on the board on your own, just follow how I am explaining things, okay? So now this so-called heavy rope that you have here where uh, it is hung from this point to this point, uh, if I'm depicting it here in the diagram and I take a small arbitrary arc length of that here and try to draw a free body diagram when it is hanging under equilibrium, I realize that at any point here to here, remember this is a uh, curve, it's not a straight line. So the tangent at which the tension acts, the angle it makes with the horizontal I'm marked here will change as I move along this curve, which means if I at an arbitrary position think that tension is going to act at an angle theta, tension is going to act at tangent, right? So it is acting at an angle theta. Once I climb up by a small length DL, then the angle I am presuming is theta plus T theta. Okay, not only that, the tension I'm assuming is varying because this is a heavy rope, it is not going to have a uniform tension. So if the tension here is T, a small increment here would be T plus DT. Okay, now uh, its own weight, which is lambda into DL into G would be acting downward. So we have to find a way to make sure that we find a equilibrium of these three forces. So vector sum of these three should be equal to zero. Okay, so we'll try to do it in a smarter manner. So we realize one very important thing that the weight is actually acting for every DL element in the downward direction. Therefore, the horizontal component of tension, which is T cos theta this way, and T plus DT into cos of theta plus DT theta this way should be equal to each other which is as good as saying that there is, there is no variation in T cos theta. If someone says T cos theta and its incremental values T plus DT into cos of theta plus DT theta are equal, it's as good as saying D of T cos theta, that is small variation in cos, T cos theta is zero. D of T cos theta equal to zero can be also written as T cos theta equal to some constant K. Okay, so if you can write therefore the variation of tension as K secant theta where Remember the theta for my convenience, because I'm going to can, uh, carry over this convention to the next problems is the angle with horizontal, whereas these alpha and beta in my question right now are with vertical. I'll take care of it at the end of the solution. So with T is equal to K secant theta as my first equation, I now move into the vertical direction. The small variation in vertical direction, I can't say zero because it has to balance the lambda DLG, right? So I should be able to on the same lines, right? D of T sine theta is equal to lambda DLG. 
Okay, right. So since t is k secant theta, I nicely substitute that k secant theta here, and it becomes k into d of tan theta equal to dLg, which is going to be important for my next problem. So keep it in mind. I'm using this equation in the next one. So what does this teach us? It teaches us as I keep climbing dLs, the value of the tan theta and hence theta should be increasing. As you could clearly see, the angle it makes with the horizontal will keep increasing, which means angle with vertical should decrease. So the value of alpha at the top should be less than beta. So I've got all the information that is needed to attack the options there. So let's move for, uh, and look at the answers that we would have got. Right. Horizontal component of the tensile force in the loop is uniform. Perfect. Vertical component of the tensile force increases with height. Yes, it does. Angle alpha cannot be greater than angle beta. It it actually right. So uh, it can be greater than ah no. It cannot be. So it can be greater is a wrong option. And angle alpha cannot assume a value of zero degrees. Now this is a contentious one. Some of my students said, okay, I'll place this nail somewhere here. Right. If the B is exactly vertically below A, then both alpha and beta equal to zero, which is a very uh, no alpha is zero and beta is 90 degrees, which is a very naughty way of doing things because that would defeat the entire purpose of catenary. It will become a straight line. So if a question of this kind is asked and is saying catenary, then you should assume that the nail is away from the wall. OK, so I, I would suggest you please don't uh, go with the value of alpha is equal to zero degrees. So I would say D is a correct answer. It can not assume an angle of zero degrees until unless you are making it a straight line. OK, so with this and the information I got, remember these equations I would be using in the next question. So what's the next question? Next question is in the ch same chapter of Newton's laws of motion from the book. Uh, it's a passage question. So let's see what it holds for us. OK. Right. So Lower end of, uh, by the way, if you want to give it a try, just take a snapshot of this page. And these are the questions following the passage. Three questions based on the information. Have a try and then do come back to solve this question. OK, right. So let me move with the formal wording of the passage. Lower end of a uniform inextensible rope of mass 2 kg and length 4 meter is attacked to a block of mass 7.5 kg placed on a horizontal floor. Coefficient of friction between the block and the floor is 0 0.5. The upper end of the rope is held 2 meter above the lower end. So this height is 2 meter. So that the tangent at the lower end remains horizontal. So he's talking about the tangent remaining horizontal here. In this situation, the block stays standstill on the floor and G value has been given as 10 meter per second square. So this is the information. So let's see what he's asking. So the first question that he's requesting, I've uh, pasted the picture here for our convenience. So the upper end must be pulled at an angle that is closest to. So for this two meter and whatever length and I think weight has also been given uh, for this particular object, uh, that is a rope and also the friction information. So he's saying for this case, the angle here with the horizontal should be 60, 53 or 45 or maybe information is insufficient. Similarly, in the same case, frictional force between the block and floor is closest to. So here he's asking what is the value of frictional force and also the upper end of the rope. So this one, the third question is a different case than this diagram. So we'll try to solve the first two questions and then move to the third one. So let's move ahead. Again, a lot of things on the board, just follow my lead. I marked some of the uh, um, Cartesian system here. So X and Y axis, I'm taking origin here. Any arbitrary small arc here for which I can draw an FBD, I'm assuming the, at that place, the tangent makes an angle arbitrary angle theta with horizontal. So this, this is my representation there. So this small arc, if I bring here, it looks like a small DL length uh, whose uh, vertical component is dy and horizontal component is dx. This is a small triangle which has an angle theta as this angle. OK, so keep that as in your mind. We'll be using that during the solution. So from my previous question, I realized the same logic that the horizontal component is fixed throughout the length of the rope. So the T becomes K secant theta. And also the vertical variation D of T sine theta should balance the weight of this each DL. OK, and remember uh, clubbing these two, we ended up at this equation. And I said we'll be using it in the next problem. So this one, 
can be done in two ways. Okay, so the first way is just write d tan theta as secant square theta d theta and lambda dlg nicely you borrow the same way. Okay, and then you integrate both sides as the theta varies from the zero degree at the bottom, which is said because it's told it need not be actually horizontal every time, but he made made sure that this is horizontal in the question. And by the time it reaches the top, it is some theta naught, which you have to find in the three options. Okay, right. So theta naught at the top. So integration of this would become tan theta naught minus zero degrees. Okay, so that integration I've done here. Alternatively, because this height is given, that is how you approach the problem. You try to see the information given and how to use the information in the question, right? So you could see that there is no dy here. So try to bring that dy by eliminating dl in terms of dy, okay? So this is a small triangle in which dl can be written as dy cosecant theta, right? So that's how I wrote this. Again, I'll do the same integration that I did. It's instead, this time I'll integrate all dy's. When I integrated all DLs, I get L. When I integrate all DYs, I get the Y naught. Okay, so that's the idea. And this integration is also not uh, very difficult because this secant square, this is cosecant. I brought this cosecant this side, green color one, and sine by cos, cos square. This sine theta d theta is like negative differentiation of cos theta. So this becomes like a one by P square integration upon substitution, right? So which will become one by P, right? So one by cos theta naught minus one, you end up getting with a minus outside makes it a uh, secant theta naught minus one. Okay, so K still stays outside and this is lambda J Y naught. So from here and here with L given as four and Y given as two, you can actually solve for K and theta naught. These are the two equations, two unknowns, K and theta naught can be found out. What is K? What is the physical significance of K? It is the value of the tension at the bottom place, right? So when theta is zero degrees, that is the bottom most tension should be the value of this K, which is the horizontal component. Now, if you draw the free body diagram of this block, which is supposedly at rest, the value of this K should be equal to the value of the static friction, which is uh, ensuring that the block is actually not moving. So whatever K you found here is actually the answer to the next question, which is the friction value, which comes out if you check the solution of these two equations, you'll get theta naught is 53 degree, assuming sine 53 is uh, 4 by 5 and k is 15, 15 newton. And that's the reason why he's saying closest to 2 because actually it is not 53, right? We know sine 53 is approximately 4 by 5. So Olympiad person who has said this question is uh, ensuring that you don't write insufficient information. So it's the closest to 53 and also the friction value uh, where is that? Yeah, the friction value is closest to 15 Newton. So the answer for this first part is 53 and 15 Newton. Let's solve the last one where he moves his hand. He is going to move his hand so that the block can move. So the last one, which is this question, the upper end of the rope is now slowly shifted downwards. So he's going to move this hand down. So this two meter no longer and simultaneously away from the block. So down and rightward. So, and the tangent at the lower end remains horizontal. So the angle here is zero degrees. When the block begins sliding at what height above the lower end is the upper end, okay? So he's asking the new value of this height when this block starts sliding. So I'm depicting that here, right? Can you see uh, the rope, let's say has moved to a new position. Uh, the horizontal here is uh, still the tangent, but the new values of this uh, two meter now has become Y naught and the length also has increased. This has moved towards right. I have not drawn the hand. Now, under this condition, you want the limiting friction to act. So just begin sliding. It is the limiting friction. And the new variations, it is still the same, right? F FBD will not change, right? Only thing is angles will change. So the value of T cos theta last time was K. Now it is K prime. That K prime for this block should be the limiting friction, mu mg, which from the information given in the passage, mu was 0.5 and the rest of the numbers, you get 37.5 Newton. Okay, right. And also from the previous problem, you if you let's suppose perform the same integration as the previous, you will end up getting k prime tan theta prime is lambda LG. Length doesn't change, but this y naught prime will come out to be this. You can see all these primes are representing these values in the new expression. Okay, so and again, in, in all of this, the k prime is known, uh, lambda LG is known, so you'll end up getting tan theta prime is 8 by 15. 
you should be knowing 8, 15, and 17 form a Pythagorean in triplet. Therefore, secant theta prime, which I need to substitute here, is 15 by 7. So that 15 by 7 substituted into this secant gives you y naught prime new value is 0.5. So the answer should be 0 0.5. In all of this, can you see, we have not derived the equation of Katner. It's more about how to approach the problem uh, in terms of the given information. If Y is given, I have integrated in terms of Y. In a future question, let's suppose if two meter is absent in the information and instead this horizontal distances are given, I should go back to this particular triangle. And while I'm performing this integral, instead of DL, I would represent this in terms of dx secant theta. Then I would have integrated dx. So it's more about the approach rather than the mugging up of the formula. So I might modify the question in a future Olympiad, let's suppose, with two meter re removed and x coordinate is given. So you should not search for what kind of uh, catenary equation it is. Instead, build your own catenary equation. The, the set of equations I wrote here, if you perform uh, some uh, manipulation here, you actually get the derivation of catenary. Okay, so let's move ahead. I'm, that's one of our practice problems. So let's see. Let's move on to the next question. A uniform rope of length L. So this is also from the same chapter, but this is slightly higher level. Check your understanding. Third question. Okay, so length is two meter. It is hung between two ends. Is suspended from two fixed nails A and B that are in the same horizontal level. Okay, if the rope makes an angle of theta equal to sine inverse point six, approximately thirty seven degrees, with the horizontal at nails. So here. Find the depth h of the lowest point on the rope below the nails and the radius of curvature rho at this particular place with the lowest point. Okay, have a fair try and then move on. I'm going to go ahead with the solution. So again, a lot of things on the board, just concentrate. This is the full FBD of the rope. Okay, so this full FBD, I have been given the tension at this place acts at an angle of 37 degrees. So imagine the tension at the highest point is TH. Its components, therefore, here and also here, I have not drawn them here, should be these numbers, very familiar ones. Okay, and the total weight of this should be balanced. So the upward components should balance the half the weight. That means here plus here should be this. So that's why I've written by two. And also the horizontal component should be the tension at the bottom. How do I get that? This one, this one comes from the half FBD. Imagine I cut this only half and draw the FBD of that. These components are the same here. And at the bottom most point, TB, T bottom B for bottom, uh, represents this tension and half the weight only acts. Then this vertical should be equal to this that I have written here anyways. And this horizontal one should be TB, which is in this. So. Combining these two and eliminating TH, I get TB is equal to 2 lambda LG by 3, which I'll use for the next problem. Okay, right? Not only that, half FBD also looks like the previous problem. Can you see this arc? This arc, especially this bottom point is horizontal, looks like this FBD. Can you see that? Okay, right. So whatever information I got from the previous problem with TB is equal to the bottommost K value. And this Y naught is this H that I have to find out. You remember that K into secant theta minus one equation with lambda Y naught G and also K into tan theta naught equation, which is lambda into length this time is half of the length. So L by two into G. Again, solving the two equations, Y is equal to two meter. Right. So if this problem was being attacked right at the start, you have you should have developed the equations the way I have developed with the dy and dl to get these two equations. Here I have taken them directly because I have taken the help of the problem just solved in the previous slide. So this is y is equal to two meter. Okay. Right. So you could see the problem situations are different, but the way you attack the problem is similar in all of them. So let's move forward. The radius of curvature part, which is again an interesting situation. Um, I have borrowed the TB value from the previous slide. And also this bottom part, small arc, because I have to calculate the radius of curvature, I need to separate out a small arc. That if I zoom and draw its FBD, so this small arc here is this small arc, okay, not drawn to scale. And the tension at the bottom should act as a tangent. Remember, this is so small that the tension at the bottom here, here throughout this small arc is the uniform one. That's why I could was able to write this as TB and TB. If I draw a normal or a radius vector at that place, which represents the radius of curvature, then this, nor this normal and this tangent should be 90 degrees to each other. Okay, and same thing happens here. So if someone asks you, why is this 
in equilibrium, its weight should be balanced by the resultant of these two TBs. Now, what is the angle between those two TBs? It should be 180 degrees minus d theta. You just place them together at the top like this. Then the angle between them, you could clearly see is the supplementary angle of this d theta. Okay, so that I have written. So at two TBs at 180 minus cos theta should result in two TB into cos of that half angle. 90 minus that angle should make it a sine and sine of very small angle makes it a d theta. Two got cancelled. So TB d theta is the resultant of these two in the vertical direction. And that should be balancing the weight. What is the weight value? Lambda into DL into G. And what is DL? Once you accept that this is the radius of curvature and makes an angle d theta, you should be able to accept that DL is r d theta. So these two should balance each other is what I'm writing here. D theta gets cancelled, you end up getting the value of R. After substitution from the TB of the previous page here, okay, I'll end up getting R is 2L by 3 for this problem. Not always. Remember, this, this all started with 37 degrees. So don't mug up these values at this place. Try to practice the way we have done the problem. So no mugging is recommended. So 2L by 3 comes for this 37 degree problem, which is 6 meter. Tells you something very simple. We got Y is 2 meter and R is 6 meter, which means uh, this is definitely not a semicircle. The radius of curvature of this is three times this height in this particular problem. Okay. Right. So that's the end of this question. Let's move on to the last one for the day. This is actually from the chapter of work and energy, which is chapter three in the book and check your understanding 17th one, which again, I'll borrow from the previous problem. I have done the radius of curvature. I'll be using that in this problem. Okay. So you want to give it a try now, pause the video, have a try and come back after five minutes. Okay. So I'm going ahead with the formal wording. A massive homogeneous rope of length L is suspended between two nails A and B given in the same horizontal level. Uh, driven in the same horizontal level, sorry. The rope makes angle theta with the horizontal at the nails and its lowest point is at a depth D below the nails. A bead threaded in the rope released from the nail A slides down the rope without friction. Okay, so this is the bead which is going to slide down without friction. If the uh, bead is so light that the shape of the rope remains unaffected. So this bead has no mass almost. So as it moves, the curve and curvature of this particular rope is not going to get affected. Find the acceleration of the bead when it passes through the lowest point of the rope. So that's the question. Okay, so it's falling under gravity. Acceleration due to gravity should be given in the question as G, which should be used in the final answer. Okay, right. <clears throat> so I'm moving ahead with the solution. It's going to be short and sweet because we have done <laughs> three questions before. Okay, so on as, 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 in a standalone point of view, this question is going to involve all the steps that I did in the previous ones. Okay, so from the previous problem, I would say this diagram I have borrowed. I just cut pasted from the previous slide. So you remember T B D theta is equal to lambda R D theta G at the bottom most place immediately gives you T B is lambda R G. Not only that, half FBD, I've just cut the half part of this diagram and put the half FBD here, TB at the bottom place this way. T at the top will have two components, T cos theta, which is same as TB, and T sin theta balances lambda LG is what I've written here. So eliminating capital T by dividing these two equations, you should be able to write TB is lambda LG by two cot theta. Okay, so lambda RG and this lambda LG cot theta by two should be equal to each other gives you the value of capital R is L by two cot theta. Same way that we have solved in the previous problem where theta was given 37 degrees, I think we ended up getting two L by three. So I've re-derived everything again uh, in this particular problem as if it's a new one, but the concept I used from the previous one. So once the radius of curvature is known, the problem is a cakewalk because the bead moves without friction, he said. So mechanical energy is conserved. So from the work energy theorem for the bead, M is for the bead here, half mv square should be mgd, the fall in gravitational potential energy. So the value of V should be root 2gd. Okay, right. Why did I get V and why did I get the radius of curvature? So when the particle moves in a curvilinear path, especially at the bottommost point, the only acceleration that would be there for the bead as it moves along the curve will be centripetal in nature. Okay, Tangent, tangential acceleration at the bottom place will be zero. Okay, so the value of AC is equal to V square by R, where V is this number and R is from the previous problem uh, that is L by two cot theta. So rearranging, you end up getting the expression given in the book, which is 4GD tan theta divided by 
L. Okay, so this looks very simple because you have done enough work in the previous three or four problems. Okay, so um, three practice problems I promised at, at the start of this uh, situation. One is the practice problem number one is going to be from the chapter two NLM objective four from the book Pathfinder. And I'll provide the solution for this in the upcoming videos. So please do try. Um, this is again a very simple application of the concepts that I have taught. Uh, uh, this problem also will not require you to mug up the formula for the catenary equation. So you don't need to know the name or uh, fame of this particular equation. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, second one, I would request you to derive the catenary equation. Okay, so uh, any catenary which is uh, of a heavy rope or a chain hung between two points uh, in a special case, right? Why is this a special case? In general case, this point and this point need not be at the same level. So I'm giving you a simpler problem. It should be a uh, cosine hyperbolic function of this manner. Okay, so prove that. And uh, wantedly, I have not mentioned where is the y axis, where is the x axis, and also the origin. And while doing this expression, I think you are good enough to realize where it is. So please do uh, find out on your own. Okay. And the link to the proof of this particular thing, I don't want to make another video on this. It's purely mathematical. There are many proofs. I have given a physics proof, uh, the link of which is in the description below. I've taken it from the wiki proofs. So please do go through that only after giving it a fair try. Okay. And as per the problem number three is again from the uh, Pathfinder, it is from the NLM, check your understanding, second question. Okay, so it's about a spring elastic cord uh, being hung in a catenary manner. So it's a nice question. Okay, so if you have followed all the concepts that I have done till now in this particular video, I think this also would be an easy one to ace. Okay, so just try to comment on what you want me to take up next and any doubts in case you have in this particular problem, please do comment and we'll uh, try to answer those questions. Okay, so um, um, you want to check out the rest of the Pathfinder solution series that is running in this channel, please do find the link in the description below or in the I button above and also the rest of the series that are running parallelly Olympiad workhorse series, AAT select series and result series, all of them are worth your time. So I would request in case you are new to this channel, there are more than 150 videos, uh, at least play three to four videos in loop. Um, each and every video has its unique way of explanation. So in case you have not done it, you have to see it. And in case you have done that question, uh, it, it, it will present to you a new perspective of looking at the problem solving. Okay, so please do like the video and share it with your peers in WhatsApp and Telegram groups so that uh, they will be encouraged to subscribe my channel because I'm pretty confident with the kind of content that is available in this channel and will be upcoming in this channel that anyone who has watched three or four videos will definitely be subscribing to me. And if you are already my subscriber, thanks for all the love and support you have been showing me in past four or five months. Uh, I would try to keep up that trust and come up with more and more quality and quantity of content that would be uh, provided to you. Okay, so thank you. See you in the next video.